Bohemian Paradise. And this is not a joke, it's actually a real place in the northern part of the Czech Republic. And it's very well known for its natural beauty. We have amazing mountains, we have rivers, we have rocks, we have um, meadows, we have climbers and hikers. But the most important thing about the Bohemian Paradise is the glass. Honestly, I was never really into glass when I was younger. I was more of a sonic and music weirdo. But I remember that I tried to find my proper relationship to glass already when I was young. And I was like four years old, and I went to see my mom to the kitchen, and I was wearing this red dotted apron fold up and shaking it. And I had tens of glass figurines of animals inside. My mom was collecting them. And I was coming there, and my eyes were shining and glowing. I was like, Mom, this sound, it's amazing. And these torsos of like giraffes without necks and, and lions without legs and puppies without ears, it just filled me with such a great joy. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> I, I got a good whipping that time, but see, from today's perspective, we might agree that it was already like an early manifestation of non-traditional approach to music and art. A um, few years back, I caught myself with the same glowing eyes. I was, I was in Barcelona attending a workshop, and there was this amazing sculpture made from metallic rods, and you could drum on it in any way you wanted. I was wondering if something like that could be possibly made from glass, because at that time I was already developing some other sound art projects and interactive exhibitions. And only then I learned all the story about Bashet brothers, who were developing these amazing instruments since 1950s, and they were traveling the whole world. And the most achieved piece, the most famous, was called Crystal Bashet. I was already playing a lot of other more classical instruments like saxophone and piano and a bit of uh, guitar and singing and Nintendo, but I always, always felt a bit limited. Like when you play saxophone, you cannot really play drums, right? When you play keyboard, you cannot really play guitar. So I was basically dreaming about becoming an octopus so I can be a full band in a one body. And seeing that instrument, Maybe this is it. I invited Marty to Czech Republic, and we ended up constructing the first crystal budget instrument in Czech Republic. And to make a difference between the classical ones and my one, which is colorful and has a shape of Spanish fan, and it's also vertical, so we called it a Bohemian crystal instrument, and it's also post budget instrument. But just between us tonight, at home, I call it a glass beast. <laughs> because it's a very moody and unpredictable, yet somehow sweet creature. Every morning it wakes up and has a different sound. I just need to caress it. So the sound gets a bit more clear. Or when I'm sad, it can be sad with me. Or when I'm just in a like romantic mood or like thinking about places I, I want to go and travel, we got on a journey together. When I want to go to party to LA, but I cannot because I have so many assignments for school. <laughs> we just make party at home.
So, finally, I think... I think I found my partner in crime. My partner in crime on the journey beyond the borders of classical instruments and classical music. My best buddy on exploration of further horizons. And it also brings me to places like this one tonight with you in, in the middle of the desert in California. <laughs> and on one hand, I think like basically the glass has shaped itself and it became this instrument. And it brings me back to uh, my Czech glass hood. But on the other hand, it takes me to exploration of the world. And Bashut Brothers, they were traveling the whole world and trying to share this experience of instrument with their audience. So let me continue with this tradition tonight and invite you on stage to have this experience with me. Thank you. <laughs>